everybody. Wow, um, I started talking to myself, apparently because I, I hit the button that you see the intro. And I was looking, and I'm like, that's funny, there's nobody here. And then there's the button that says go live. That could probably be why there was nobody here. Hello, everyone. I think that means it's Monday, right? Is that what that means? So, yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm super excited. We have some hello from Orlando. Uh, hello from Maine. Um, so we have some fun in store today um, with working with some of the sprays. So I'm going to move you guys on down to my workspace because as always, an hour just does not seem like it is enough time to spend crafting with you guys. So today we're going to work with the Anemone Branch uh, stencil and die set. So we're basically mostly gonna be working with the stencil, but we're gonna throw the die in a little bit. Um, oh, welcome, so welcome, welcome. It's good to see friends new and old, but welcome to your first all to new live. Thank you so much. Um, if you share about today's live, um, you will be entered into a possibility of winning a gift card. And everybody, please say hello to my partner in crafty crime behind the scenes, uh, Roxanne. Uh, she will be on all the sharp turns that we make today. She's she anticipates them. I don't know how she does it. She's so good. Uh, so we're going to do the anatomy branch and we're going to do it with the all to new sprays. So we're gonna kind of paint with these today and I've chosen a few colors. So uh, we are gonna do a background by using the dyes and hello and um, using the uh, positive space and putting that on a background and creating a background with that. Just something a little different. And also I thought we'd throw in the bold sentiments because hey, why not? So I thought that would be fun. So let's get started with our stencil first. I am going to use watercolor cardstock. So there's my first sharp right hand turn. Um, I have run out, so I have to put in an order to get some more. I thought I had some more, but I've gone through the closet a few times and it's not in there. So. All right, so if you're new to our amazing stencils, I just wanted to show you up in the corner, you can see there is a one, a two, and a three in the gorgeous Altenew Insignia. So this helps you align it with the layering guide that's on the inside of the pamphlet that comes with the stencil, similar to the ones that you see for the uh, stamp sets. So um, some of these will be actually in your stamp sets. So you may find some of your stencil, if there's a set like a, a Build-A-Garden, sometimes you'll find this piece in your layering guide for your stamp set. So there's always a layering guide if the stencil layers together. Hopefully that makes sense. So we are going to use this. Um, the newer guides also have the stencil number where you'll find each of the pieces. So like right here in the newer guides, this would have a little number one next to it. So hopefully that helps you out in your space with um, your crafting. So let's go ahead and let's make this beautiful piece right here. We're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to keep that right off to the side. I've got just a random um, piece of cardstock uh, here. I'm going to try it on here first. I have better ability of moving color on the 50%, which is the A2 size Altenew watercolor cardstock. And I threw out my last package of it, unfortunately, because it was all gone. Um, so I don't have like the um, what it looks like, but this is the nine by 12 here. So this is a hundred percent cotton. So it's got some tooth to it, which is great, uh, for a lot of techniques. Hi, Jeanette. Welcome to all to new. We're so excited that you are joining us. It's very exciting. Lots of crafty fun that goes on here. So welcome, welcome, and welcome to everybody else as well. All right. So we're going to use some frosty pink for, cause we have a little pink flower there. And to go with my frosty pink, I'm gonna use the coral berry. 
And then for my little branch, um, it has black. I'm going to use the caramel toffee. Hello, 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 all my friends. And then I have some antique gold because I think we're going to do the vase in that. But we may do it. I also pulled the antique silver. We might do it in that. And then my leaves, I actually had pulled forest glades um, that looked a little dark. And I saw a mountain mist and I was like, ooh. And you'll notice on the top of all of mine, I have a little half inch circle. What I've done is I've sprayed cardstock, I've let it dry, and then I cut it out and put it on the top so I can see what the color really looks like. Because it looks a little different from my cap. Ooh, we don't want to twist it and then turn it over. So see, it looks a little different. So this way you get to really see what the colors look like. And then there's a set that I love. Um, I love to do ombre techniques with this one. And this is the Cool Summer Night. So it has sea glass, ocean waves, and dusk. So some really pretty colors you can see right there. So lots of fun techniques to do with these. And I've got some yucky brushes um, that I didn't, I didn't pull the all to new ones. Hello! I didn't pull the all to new ones out of the big safe that I keep them in today. Because I'm working with these um, sprays that have some glitter and shine and stuff in them, I didn't want to get that in my really good brushes. So I like to keep some old brushes around to do techniques like this. So what we will do first, and maybe we won't do the vase first, I think the arrangement would be super pretty just to have it come down. I just looked at that picture and I was like, ooh, that's kind of pretty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just line this up about here. And then we will get some of the, I have pieces of this all over my desk, the satin masking tape. I was gonna take a new one. I was like, no, you have old ones, silly girl, use that. All right, so we're gonna do that. And then I am gonna get my brush wet. And then we are going to get out a palette or two. I got took out two just in case. So I'm going to paint first with the caramel toffee. Shake, 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 shake. Shake your spray. Nobody wants me to sing. Trust me. Okay. So I'm just going to put a bunch. Well, not a bunch because this goes a long way. And we're not really painting that huge of a thing here. So if you were using like the three coordinating ones, you could always at the end just spray it with water and pick it up with a piece of paper and that would be really pretty. But So I don't want my brush super wet and I also don't want a dirty brush, which this one is apparently a dirty brush. It was in the clean. I keep a, um, <laughs> so for those of you that like to clean your paint brushes and store them out by the sink, I have an old toothbrush holder just one you'd find at like the dollar store, like literally the old one with like about eight, you know, holes. And I just keep that out next to my sink. Um, and I put my paint brushes in there so that they can dry once I've used them. So I'm going to try to be careful because I don't want to um, put too much and have it go under the stencil. If it goes under the stencil, I'm really kind of okay with it. I don't mind. I feel like it makes it look like I watercolored it. Uh, so I like the look of it. So we're just going to go and uh, be on this one, just in case anything seeps under the little areas, I'm kind of keeping my hand away from it. Certain ones, I'll want to make sure that my hand holds down the stencil really, really tight to do this technique. But hopefully you guys will try this technique. And this works with your watercolors, your water brush markers, of course, your inks. So lots of ways you can use this technique. But I know, you know, a lot of times we think of the sprays as sprays. We don't think of the sprays as to paint with. So you can paint with, bring out your paint of flowers. Any, any uh, stamp set that you have that you can paint, you can do it with these sprays. And they have the gorgeous, gorgeous shimmer. And maybe you just want to do you know, simply the branch here, you don't want to do the whole thing in the shimmer sprays and that's okay too. So I'm just going to wash this off. All right. So there's my branch. How pretty is that? Isn't that pretty? Pretty, pretty, pretty. All right. So I'll wipe that off just kind of as we go, being careful. 
And then since we are going to put stuff over it, we didn't use a lot of water and spray, but I'm just going to hit it with my heat tool real quick. Yay! You fall, you uh, fell on alive, Roxy, it sounds like. Unexpected. I love when that happens, when I'm in the right place at the right time and I didn't even realize it. That's always an exciting thing to happen. Okay, so I probably should keep that near me, but I'm going to set that back over there. But see how pretty and shiny. Look how nice that is. Oh, so pretty, so pretty. Okay. I get distracted very easily <laughs> by color. Now you can clean that off. If you don't trust yourself, definitely go ahead and uh, clean that off. So now what we're gonna do when we do these, okay, we wanna match them up. Now this is half the size, but you can see that the shape is very similar here. So I know that this one <clears throat> is going to be the flower that's over here on this side. And it's going to line up, I'm going to line it up right there with, there's a little dot right here. There's a little, little indentation. You can see it kind of sticking out where my hand is right there. You can see that point. That's what I'm going to line up because um, we do have some leaves that are going to go up ahead of us. And if you wanted to, you could do the leaves. Actually, here, I'll show you. You don't have to follow the stencil guide. So say you're like, oh gosh, but what if I don't leave enough room for my leaves? Let's do our leaves first. We could do that. We could do anything we want, right guys? Right, right? So this is gonna go off uh, because I just plopped my paper down in all honesty. So mine will go off the page. And I'm just, because our stencils are see-through, I'm just making sure to line it up the best I can with each thing here. And then I'll bring back my fake little piece of tape. So this is going to be our first layer. Ooh, thunderstorm. Oh, goodness. I know it rained here today, too. We didn't get any thunder, but it's been so hot. It is still, oh, it is so hot. So hot, so hot. And there's a little... You can hear the ball in there. So sometimes you have to, it gets kind of all bonds with the spray in there. So you've got to get it wiggling around. And everybody has some swirl, some do like a bell so that it moves back and forth across the bottom and gets a good mix. But because we're not really, we're not spraying these, we're just going to go ahead and use them as paints today. So my brush is a little damp. So I'm just going to come over. And I'm going to pick up the mountain mist and these areas I like to kind of outline and these are the ones see I've got my fingers up close so I'm holding that down in place whereas the last time I was okay if it kind of seeped out a little bit here I really don't want any seepage I really want to keep it as tucked in as I can so but you want to just trace along your stencil and this really allows you, this is like the no line coloring of stenciling to me. So I think it's just a cool, a really cool, fun technique. And I always feel like a watercolor artist after I'm done. I'm like, ooh, look, I freehanded that. And only you guys know the truth. It's hot there too. Yeah, it's hot a lot of places, but... I know what's coming. Um, somebody mentioned the other day, we're only six months away from a large holiday and oh goodness. Um, I don't mind so much the holiday coming. It's the, I know that we get snow with said holiday. So it's like, holy Toledo. All right. So I'll put a little bit more down. I underestimated how much I would need. And I think the fun part of this is the reveal you know when you're doing this part you're like yeah all right yeah it's i've i've covered all the spaces okay yeah but then when you lift it up it is the magic and i think an added bonus here is that you get this beautiful shimmer wow, i really underestimated i didn't think we were using that much here today 
And then at the end, two, <laughs> counting the days to Halloween. Um, I used to like Halloween as a kid. All the costumes, because my mom would make our costumes, so it was kind of fun. Um, at the end, too, I'll give you some tips on splattering. So that's why I originally chose uh, to do something with the sprays, is I know a lot of people say they struggle with doing the splattering. And it definitely is a technique that takes, you know, some some practice, but there are a few tips that I can give you that can help you in your practice of this. All right, so, okay, you ready? Ta-da! And I mean, I think that's so, so pretty. Just, and that's the thing, each step you go, it's like, ooh, this is really pretty. I could stop here, but wait, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, keep going, keep going. Now, you have some choices. So, you could go and you could you can dry this and add more of the mountain mist or you could come in i'm going to do a little bit of the lagoon yeah i love i love painting through a stencil um it's one of my favorite 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 techniques to go to so i pulled lagoon another right hand turn here for my layer i know doesn't it and it's so fun because you're like oh my gosh it looks like i painted it it's so cool you know and, and people are like wow you freehand drew this and you're like um no uh i freehand stenciled it kind of my hand was free and i stenciled it <laughs> oh goodness okay itch itch okay all right so now we'll just line up our leaves so this is the other kind of i think really important message is that even though in the guide it said that i should go and i should do the flowers first and then do my leaves i can do it in any order that i am comfortable with so keep that in mind for any of the layers. That's okay. If you change the layers, you know, as long as it's it's comfortable for you, that's the key point, okay? Now this, I wanna be more careful because these are smaller sections. So you kinda want to have, if you can have a finer point paintbrush, that's one of the detail ones. So you could have a set of the all to new ones for techniques like this. Uh, that is absolutely a possibility. I just, I can't bear to. They're so pretty and they work so well. I love them so much that I have other ones that have been retired from the front lines of watercolor, um, as I say. And so now that's what these have been reserved for. And my stencil moved just a scotch, but I already have some stuff on there. So I'm just gonna flip it up and make sure. I know, and wouldn't it look pretty with no flowers? Like this is kind of where I'm like, okay, I could stop here, you know? And I, I kind of tend to do that at each of these areas. I'm like, oh, but it's so pretty, I should stop here. And then I add another layer and I'm like, oh, I'm so glad they didn't stop. I'm so glad because um, it's so pretty. So I just readjusted and then I'll come in again. Now my other one's off, but that's okay. I've already painted it. And I think I have a piece of emery hair in my paintbrush here. So I feel like I'm painting with cat hair a little bit. <laughs> oh, goodness. I probably could make some really nice paintbrushes. She has very thick, luscious hair. Okay, so that's the thing. You want, when you go into these little sections, you want to have a relatively dry paintbrush. It's okay. I think it's good to have it be damp, but you don't want it super wet because if you think about it, you're putting all that liquid into a spot where liquid's really not intended to go, so to speak. And you can always fix this after. 
and you can draw out. I'm going to just put another paintbrush to hold that up so I don't squish the top up there down because we're going to fill in this one and then I will heat them. So I'm going to hold this right here. And that's the thing. It's just figuring out with this technique, one of the biggest secrets to this technique is figuring out where best to apply pressure so that you don't get liquid in areas you don't want it, but you still can get all of your stenciling done and have it look really pretty. So that's, it takes practice. It definitely takes practice. But once you have kind of those techniques down, you're able to do it. And the other thing is, is you can come in after and add more details with your paintbrush. Okay. Oh, Saskia says hi. Hello, Saskia. Hello, Anne. Hello, everybody. Yes, I love, love the mountain mist in the lagoon. Oh, I... <laughs> I picked Forest Glades because I had used that color on a project uh, that will be upcoming uh, and I had it out and then I looked at the mountain mist and I was like, ooh, that's the only other problem with this technique is when you look at your colors, you're like, oh, but it looked pretty in this and this and this and this. And then we're going to have to all quit our jobs just so we can do one stencil with all of the colors. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the leaves are coming out so pretty. And I think the thing too, another tip I'll give you about this set and what I think is wonderful is that, so I have two sections here, but if I were to put this at the bottom of a card panel, you could just have that and then have this one or this one at the bottom and then move this down because it's just a stencil. So see where it's in two pieces here, you could actually move this bit down so it's coming out of this branch and create a beautiful card just using the gorgeous leaves. And I think leaves, leaves are the bridesmaids, my friends. You know, it's, it's always about the bride, but we got to remember sometimes the leaves can be beautiful additions to our projects and they can take the stage. Now, see... The reason I did this was so that I could place my flower a little bit better because I could have gone, I could have done it and done my leaves, you know, followed the guide because the guide had me doing my flowers and then my leaves. But I decided not to because I wanted to make sure I got my flower in a nice place. So I decided without, you know, because I if I went too far this way, I'm in my leaf. And then what do I do? I got to move my leaves. And so I find it just was easier on this particular uh, stencil to do that first for myself. But that's what make these your own, you guys. Figure out what process, you know, what would work better in your space for you. Because we want you to use all these beautiful things um, that you get in your space and make some gorgeous, gorgeous projects. So we will go, I'm going to do the sea glass next. Whee! Rainy New Jersey. I think we're going to be getting some of that rain. So I think it's, we got some today, but I, I might be getting more, to, I'm not sure. I woke up this morning to Emery uh, ripping the air conditioner out of the window. It's just one of those that the air conditioner's in the house, you know, the vent is in the window, but she, um, the window was up and decided that she wanted to sit in the window and the air conditioner was just not helping. So she decided she was going to move the air conditioning vent and she did. So <laughs> that's what I woke up to. But it's, it's just been so hot here. I haven't had to use the AC yet. And I was so happy. I love leaving the windows open at night and it's so cool. And you get that breeze and you shut them in the morning, you know, that old thing. So sea glass and ocean waves. We're going to go ahead now, I will tell you, too, if you're saying, wow, I love these. These are gorgeous, but I don't have any of them. These do go on sale a lot. Altenew puts these in the 45% off sale. Uh, usually, there's at least one a week. Um, I used to look every, I used to be a, on the Altenew website every day person. I've slowed down um, since I've built my collection of supplies. And 
Um, but they used to have them quite frequently. And I still do when I pop in to look at the sales here and there, um, I still do see them in there. So if these are something you're like, you know, I never thought of those before, but they're pretty cool. Um, keep your eye out for a nice, uh, they have them on sale. So see, we've got our floral and it's got shimmer. It's harder for you guys to see, but it does have shimmer. Then you can come in and this trick will work better with different stencils. You can come in and if you had any leak out, you can go ahead and just kind of clean it up with your paintbrush. So if you went outside the lines anywhere, you can fix it. So it that's the good thing about the flowers. And you can come in and you can add more depth and dimension if you want to. You know, this stencil does have a layer for this flower. But if you want to take the time, oh yeah, try this, try this super, super fun technique super fun don't get try not to get frustrated with it um i the first time i tried it it took me a couple tries um to figure out where to put pressure so the water didn't go under um how much water to put on my brush all of those things took me a little bit to figure out so if just stick with it stick with it um and i think you'll really enjoy the technique so i'm going to use my same trick okay I'm going to put a paintbrush over here so this can kind of dry, but so that I can get my other flower. Well, that didn't work, did it? So I can get my other flower kind of in position here. And this one actually has two branches. So if I can get the piece of fur off there and it fits right up in here. Trying to figure out how I want to position it because it's kind of how I positioned my stuff. And I think, I think that's going to be how I'm going to position it. I just don't want to get too much. I don't want to go too over my little branches there, but I also. So it's just the game of fitting it into where it's supposed to go. And I think that's where I'm going to decide to put my flower. And that other flower seems to have dried. I'm not using a lot of water. So that's the secret. All right. And then we're going to shake up <laughs> uh, Frosty Pink and Coral Berry. I'm getting a workout, you guys. I wonder if this is counting as steps on my watch. You know how you used to swing your hand and it would count steps? Oh, my gosh. I'll have walked so far today, you guys without leaving one spot. How cool is that? <laughs> All right, so I won't believe my watch tonight, I guess, because I've been shaking up a storm here. All right, and I think that's enough. Okay. And again, just a damp brush. I don't want wet, I just want damp. So I'm gonna go in with my frosty pink and this one I can be a little bit more liberal with because I have such a big space. I'm starting off the stencil and coming on. I guess I didn't put enough there. Okay, we'll bring out, that's what's good to have these on top too. That's, I really love having those on top because that way I can look really quick. And if it, you know, if I have a couple on my desk that I'm like, oh, that could be close. Is that the right one? Um, I can look then at the name, but I like just having that quick reference. So, because as Ferris Bueller says, life moves pretty fast. Okay. I think that will do just fine. And I do usually try to go, my goodness. I think it's just drying quickly because I've got fans on and it's humid here. And All right. I usually try to go in one direction. So I either try to go portrait or landscape so that I kind of keep it, you know. But this is alive. All bets are off. L-O-L. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, ocean waves. Oh, is so pretty. I love that. Um, oh, goodness. What's that one called? 
Oh, the three set. Cool nights. Cool nights, I think. Um, I love that set. It's so pretty. So here's where we're at. That's pretty there. That's pretty there. But we're not done yet. We got more to do. All right. So now I'm going to tuck this under so I don't stick this in my extra sprays. <laughs> because so something I would do, you know, just drag it through sprays and then wonder why I got excess uh, color on my project. So I've got that lined up, you know, pretty good. And we will put this, trim this down over here. Just so you know, we do have a fur on the scene. She is here to be my live studio audience. And of course, drink the color, the water that I'm using because not a lot of people like to do it, but you know, she's dedicated as a a lovely assistant. All right. So you may see a big furry paw go in my water bucket if you do. <laughs> Just so you know, I know you guys probably would have guessed by now because she loves to craft and she loves paint brushes and round things. So today is like her crafty dream come true. We like the, we like the shiny. Oh yeah. She's about to knock it over. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Yeah. And it is. And so wait till we see. So we've kind of, so we're spending a little bit of time on this. So we probably will get two cards done today. Unfortunately, I usually like to get more done with you guys. And I would craft all day with you guys. So, you know, but unfortunately we can't. But while we have the time, we'll get some good ideas going. And if you guys make these and would like to share them in the Altenew fan group, I would love to see them. Love, 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 love. Because I love to see everything you guys make. Even if you're like, oh, no, this project did not come out the way it was supposed to. We all have those. All have those ones that kind of, they kind of win a little bit. All right. And then we figure it out and we fix it. And then we come back stronger than ever and tougher crafters. All right. So now we're going with a coral berry. Beautiful color. Beautiful. And I'm going to start because my paintbrush was a little wetter. It's pooling. So I'm going to wipe my brush off and then I'm going to put some of this color. I'm going to spread some of this color out. We're going to move the cat because that's critical. All right. guys didn't know that was a critical step to painting with with uh, the sprays but all right and you can go back at least to grab your art supplies <laughs> I think we have a lot of furs um, as I call them that love to help and just can't wait to help us um, just their idea of help and our idea of help are two Pretty different things, usually, you know. Oh, goodness. But that's okay. At least it's nice to have a helper. It's so nice. All right. And again, you know, you can clean up these lines. And if, because you can see, some of my color is darker in some spots. So I can always go back. I just put a little bit more on my palette. And like I said, too. You know, if you're using, if you were just using the cool summer night, so you're using the sea glass, the ocean waves, and the dusk, you can, if you just have that color on your palette, just spray it with some water, pick it up, and make a background. I'll show you what I mean today. I don't know what we're going to get because I have quite a few different colors. So not quite sure what we're going to get, but we're going to find out. So just another idea because I really dislike wasting any of these sprays. They are so pretty. So, yeah, so I have some different color, which, as you know, we all know, colors are not solid all the way throughout. So if you have some different color, that's okay. So here is our pretty arrangement. Now, there are flower centers that we can put on here. The one that's more closed goes on this one. And then the one that's open goes over here. So I'm going to dry these and make sure they're really dry before we set the center somewhere.
I know. Sometimes it is. It's like the box of chocolates. I know. I've got a lot of 90s movie references today, don't I? Okay, so hopefully these are drier. Thank you so much. I'm glad you guys are liking where it's going. Hopefully these are dry enough because we're going to go in and we're going to put our flower centers. So at home, you guys can wait a little bit longer than I am. So I'm going to use some of my um, antique silver for the centers. You also could take, even though you've already used the sprays, if you want to stay with a spray motif, super cool. You also could take like a blending brush and do some obsidian here and heat set it. That would be really pretty. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and be tough, even though I'm scared that it's not dry enough. And I'm going to put in my silver and I may need a couple of coats, uh, but it will get the, the point across but you could if you want a really stark dark color I would suggest doing obsidian with a blending tool but I'm okay with just as long as the flower center is there I'm okay with it and I was okay when the flower center wasn't there no it was me yep I was out of frame for a second there I didn't look up my apologies, but the good news is we're going to do it again. So <laughs> we, we good. It's so nice. We're going to do it twice. Okay. So we'll make sure we're right there. So this one, I am going to heat set this because you know, I'm going to drag my hand through it, right? You guys can see that happening too, right? And I'm going to pull that color right across that flower. All right. And I did lose a little bit. I didn't hold my stencil down like I should have. I lost a little bit of definition. But you could go in too with the little fine liners and do some doodling. Um, so if you wanted to, let me see. I don't have mine right here. Um, trying to see. We have, oh, we have the silver in the gel pen. Oh, I'm glad you like it, guys. All right, so we have the silver and the gel pen. I don't know if it's going to do the trick or not, but what we can do, and then we'll do our finer, final flower center. I can't talk. So what we can do is we'll put it as close as we can, and then you can come in and just trace this so that even though we lost a little bit of definition because I didn't put my hand in the right area, and that's what will happen is you'll just lose a little bit of definition in an area if you don't hold that stencil down. So I'm kind of glad it happened because it shows you. But what you can come in and do is you can come in and doodle. So see, it shows that that's that flower center, but it's a little watercolory, a little loose, and it's really pretty. So what we will do now is the second one, we will come over and let's see. Let me look at my guide here. So my guide shows that most of the little fingers, I look at this like an octopus. So there's two little eyes of the octopus and those are there. So my two little eyes of the octopus are gonna go in the back. And then the rest of it is going to go out. And the largest one, I'm just trying not to drag that through. The other one, I'm looking, got my little octopus there and I got that there. I'm gonna go with it. So. We will go with that. All right, so this brush again is too wet. So you'll be able to tell right off if it's a little too wet. And this one, I may actually, I probably should have used, um, I could have used the jet black because we do have a jet black one. I just like the antique silver. Um, usually I love obsidian for sentiments, Sometimes for outlines, I'm a big, I love no line coloring. I love it so delicate and soft and I feel like a bull in a china shop. So I'm always amazed when I can pull off a nice soft look. So it's really one of my favorite looks. Um, so I, the obsidian gives a nice crisp, dark line, but for things like this, I usually like the softer, 
So it's pretty soft, but I can go back in there and I can make it as dark as I want to. And that's the fun thing. He's not going to be able to see if you put the eyes at the back. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't want to see. <laughs> I just, I always look at these and I'm like, okay, there's an octopus and this is a peacock. See, cause it's all fanned out. That's how I, that's how my brain works. So yeah. So here is our first card, which took, took a bit, but, and that's the thing. And if you wanted to, you could trim it off or the other thing you can do. So you have this. Okay. So I'll show you another trick. So this is this is the nine by 12 piece of alt new uh, cardstock that's a hundred percent. So what you can do is this can go right at the top because we're gonna trim this. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't mean to mention fussy cranky cutting, I'm so sorry, but uh, it's okay, we'll be okay together. We can get through that together. So what you can do, you can do a couple things. So. If you want to get messy, let's get messy. Why not, right? You guys are like, yeah, it's not in my office. Let's go for it. <laughs> let's do it. All right. We're going to cover the electronics. We're going to cover most of the desk. All right. And then we're going to come over. And I'm just going to go wild. I'm going to go over. Oh, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? Okay. Whew. All right, I'm just going to cover this. We're going to go with it. All right, we are going to go wild. Oh, Sue, you should have seen me the other day. I was so colorful. I had so much fun. So see, we can just spray this and spray the shapes as well. But just this is just another idea. Look at the different shapes that you can just spray them on your card background. So we're going to set this aside just for un momento while it dries. The wonderful thing about having a puppy pad here is I just do this and get a lot of that right off there. And then I am ready to go again. So I'll set this in the to be cleaned pile, which I don't really have one of those going at the moment, but we, we can start one. All right, so we got that. So now what we'll do, because we have all these colors, what are they gonna make? I don't know, let's find out. This is the fun about crafting. So we're going to spray it. And then we're going to take, this is another piece of 100% cotton. And we're just going to kind of pull the color. And if it makes brown, I'm not against brown. I know a lot of folks aren't keen on making brown. That's okay. I don't mind it. Brown's a color. Brown needs some love. And then if you want to, if there's a color missing, that you didn't really see on there. You can really pull some of it. That's a lot. Like I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> We're gonna go with it. We're going with it. All right. So we'll fill in all the sides, but this is the fun part too is about painting with these is that you can do that. So you can also use them just to pull this, you know, yeah, I should have just added more colors. I went a little wild <laughs> with the uh, the ocean waves, but hey, you guys said you liked it as a color. So we went with it, you know, and that's okay. It'll make a pretty bad one. All right. So now that we've made a little bit of mess, yes, yes, doing that with tags is fun as well. Now that we've made a scotch of a mess, we're going to make more of a mess. So what we're going to do, we get about 15 minutes here, and I think we will time this just about right if I have my piece of paper. So I have a piece of masking paper. I apologize, uh, Roxanne, for the right-hand turn here. Another one. And we're going to take the dies. And I'm going to say, I know I just saw them. I did the, the shuffle. I know the color came out so pretty. That's one of my favorite colors. That and the mountain mist. I can't believe I forgot the mountain mist at first. And then I looked at it. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So this is the masking paper. Okay. You've got the pretty flowers on the back. So the back, the back, the pretty part is the back. So keep that in mind. That's the backing that you remove. So we're going to pull out our little mini blossom. We're going to grab a pair of scissors and we're just going to cut some 
strips. And hopefully I cut that wide enough. I'm just a guessing. Oh, I did. I did. Look at that. Once in a blue moon, it's like, woohoo! I did that right. Right, right, right. All right. I'm saying right a lot today, apparently. Okie dokie, hokey pokey. All right. So when we do this, okay, got our dies on there. You want to start your metal plate back a tad, okay? Because if you put it there, your sandwich is too tough. This way, the plates squish and pull everything in, okay? So this way it goes right in. Dun, dun, dun. We should have some die cutting fun music, you know, like when the road runner gets chased or something like that. We need something super duper fun like that. So some road runner chase die cutting music. That's the official name of it. It's a big long name, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and here we go. Off to the races again. And since this is, I'm going to do an A2 panel. My panel is an A6 panel, um, but that's okay. So I'm just going to cut a few more. This card is going to be really super simple. We are just going to put these and what you could do as well. So I'm die cutting all of these individually. What you could do is you could take an A2 panel of masking paper and just repeatedly cut the die. Organ grinder music. Yes. Or meat. Meat. Yes. Yes. You guys. You guys get it. You guys get it. You guys. The best. Love it. Um, so you could take an A2 piece of masking paper and just keep moving your dies around that and then lay that whole panel over your project. I'm going about it the more complicated way, which I know shocks everybody. <laughs> but, you know. If you can't complicate things once in a while, you know? So, okay. So what we're going to do, and I have five here. I'll trim this down. I'll actually do four by five and a quarter, just so I make sure that I have enough flowers. And you can cut, you know, as many as you want out of masking paper. But the good part of this is that you can I broke my nail, so let's see if we can get these apart. There we go. Um, so I'm just going to kind of put these randomly around the page. And these, because you have the dies too, these would be easy to trace around. You know, you can make lots of flowers, and then you can just kind of do what we did with the uh, with the vase. We'll trim the vase out really quick, and that will just give you another idea. Uh, you can make it dimensional. All right, and then I don't want to have matching ones next to each other. So I'm going to put that one there. And then this one, I mean, there's only two of them, so it's not like they're going to be really spaced out. But this one will be the, the sea creature. Kind of looks like a clamshell open to me. But it's the way I see the things. Sometimes it's a little wonky. All right, and then I'm going to put this one right here. And then since I'm out of masks, I'm going to risk it. And I'm going to just put some of the glue tape pen onto this. Now, the only problem is, is because this is not like the masking paper and not fully covered. It's just a mask I made. I may run into the problem where I get a little seepage underneath it. I'm okay with that. As you saw, I, it's fine. But you can also use these extra pieces that come off because this you can put adhesive on and put it right on there. So now what we're going to do, I just, that mountain mist, oh my goodness. Eee, shake, 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 shake. All right, here we go. So we're going to do that. Okay, and then I'm going to take a clean section of my puppy pad. This is why I love the puppy pad. Big fan of the puppy pad. Because then I just put it aside and it dries and it's ready to go for the next time. When it does get pretty filthy with color, I do move on to a new one. But I got like 120 for not that much money. So <laughs> it's not like it's expensive and had to worry about, you know. But I do stretch them. I do, as you can tell, um, this one is very colorful. I do stretch them as long as I can, but they have plastic on the back. So water's not getting through them. So that's what gets 
that's what sold me. All right, now normally you would wait for this to dry so as you don't tear your paper. So if there is paper tearage, just keep in mind that I really should allow this to dry on its own terms because um, I'm removing sticky off a background that's kind of damp. But I think this is a fun technique. See, it's kind of disintegrating because it's really wet. Ooh, goodness. Yeah, I love the puppy pad. I just happened upon it. It was in my office and I was playing with sprays and I was like, the box was, I was using so many sprays that the box was literally had a pool at the back of it. And I was worried it was going to leak. So I put the box on a puppy pad and then I'm like, wait a minute, I don't even need the box anymore. So I was super stoked and I've loved it ever since. So, and they're really cheap. You know, if you have a crafty friend, go in on a pack with them and you'll have them for literally ever. They last so long. So see, mine are super, super uh, disintegrating because they are so wet because you saw, and I'm turning green. All right, but that's okay. It's worth it because it's such a pretty color. So here you go. And you have this. Pull that up. All right. And then the last thing, the only thing I would add to this card, um, and we can, I think we have time to quickly do it. So there's our background panel. So kind of, you know, a bit of interest. Now you could just stamp your sentiment uh, directly onto your project when it's dry. Remember the ink could spread if it's wet and you do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp out this sentiment super duper quickly because I tell you an hour with you guys goes by in about 10 seconds. And it's like, but wait a minute, I'm supposed to have a whole hour. And it's like the hour's gone. Oh, ooh, a tower of paper. Ooh, that's fun. Lots of options there. Okay, so I did the You're Amazing from the Bold Sentiments. Hopefully I inked it up well enough. I did do really quickly my uh, eraser. So all I would do is not stick my hands in the obsidian and I'm going to leave this end on there just so I have something to trim up because otherwise I'm going to stick my fingers in wet obsidian, which as crafters, most of us have likely done. And then the trick here is I haven't touched the obsidian and there we go. So I've given it a bit to dry. So to finish off this card, I would just maybe flip it because of that space that's open is right there. There's my card. And this could be a super fun one to use a whole bunch of like these bold sentiments and put those on there. I think that would be super duper fun. All right. And then the last bit we're going to do is we were going to trim this bit out. But look how fun, like the different designs you could make by just using that back piece right there, that layer of the flower, you could create a really, really fun background with that. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm trimming right up against it. I'm not gonna try to leave any space. I don't want to. If you have any white space showing around your vase and that bothers you, just go back in with your paintbrush and your uh, mountain mist or whatever color you have used. And you can do your edges just like you would a normal, like with your artist marker, if you cut out an image and you can see the edges and you go around with your marker, you just take it and go around the edges. I would just take my paintbrush and go around the edges there. Okay, so we have that one there. My desk is shrinking here. Does that mean we've had fun? If that, if my desk has like shrunk to nothing, is that what that means? That we've had a really, really fun crafty session. So see, now you can come in and you can post your little, have your little vase and you could, ha ha, it's on my desk. It's just buried. Foam tape, foam tape. 
Oh, good. I'm glad that mess equals fun. I was hoping so. I thought so. But I always like to check with you guys as well. Now, I have to tell you, if I had to do it again, would I do the silver? No. I probably would have done a different color. I love how delicate my flowers were. And I think that gray just kind of, eh, for me. I, I don't know. I think... I think I should have gone with the obsidian. I think I would have been happier. Even though it would have been so dark, it would have been a contrast. I feel like it's too light for me. Um, so I feel like I really needed to. Yeah, see, you guys can see how my desk has, has shrunk. Um, but yeah, so see our two cards and I did not put down our sentiments. Ah, nope. Oh, there it is. I'm like, I know I just had it. So I would just put that right there. So that is basically it for today. That's how to show how to use, you know, you can use your sprays to watercolor. Yeah, I could do the obsidian later. And I think I will. Um, that's a good idea, Roxy. I think I will um, use my stencil and my detail blending brush. And I will go back in and put that because I think it's going to be that starkness against the lightness. Oh, Stacy, it's me thanking you so much for joining me today to spend an hour to craft with me. I always love crafting with you guys. And like I said, if you guys make these cards or something that you use your sprays to watercolor in the future, I would super love to see. And that's the other thing, Ms. Tamp, too. That's a good idea. You could stamp. Say you had, like, this is from the little folk art set. This is just a leaf. You could stamp that all over your vase using the ink spray. So just put a little of the ink spray on your palette, okay? Stamp your stamp down in there and then stamp this all over it and it will be really pretty. Um, I'm not sure, hold on, we have, okay, we have like a minute and a half, but let me just see if I spray this. Now, hopefully it doesn't ruin my vase. I just sprayed this with water and I just want to see, I think it will leave a mark, but I use so many mediums. Yes. So I just wanted to make sure to test it before I told you. So see, it's really a subtle, so you can also remove it with water. So it's a really pretty, so that will be really, really pretty um, on your vase as well. You can do it like a really light, light pattern and that's, yep, just that little leaf. Um, I showed off this little leaf too, cause he's kind of the, this one's kind of the bridesmaid, you know, you have that big, beautiful floral motif and the leaf kind of is in the background just hanging out, but they need to be center stage as well. Everybody should be center stage, right? Right. So I hope to, uh, see some cards that you guys have made and I'll let you know what I do with that, uh, background that we made with a lot of ocean waves. I didn't expect that much of uh, ocean waves there, but, and thank you all so much for joining me. It is always so awesome to be able to have the honor to spend an hour with you each week. I will be back uh, on July 7th to spend some more crafty time with you and we'll have another wonderful adventure. Thank you so much to Roxanne for being my amazing co-pilot and standing up to all those sharp right turns. She's phenomenal. Thank you all for joining me. You guys are uh, amazing as well. And I look forward to spending crafty time with you all the time. Thank you so much, everybody, um, as well, for letting us uh, at Alt New help you craft your life. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye, guys.